everyone it's masterpiece and as you can see today i got the brand new boba fett starship from the book of boba fett this thing is pretty big <clears throat> it's taking up most of the camera space here but um yeah we're just here for basically this guy and i think there's a few paint app differences with the actual uh starship but <clears throat> yeah we're here to do a review on the 200 dollar nomad boba fett so let's get into it that's the front includes this play stand and boba fett figure there's another little picture right here if you could see that nice little picture of them when of uh Boba and Fennec when they're trying to steal back the Slave One, or I mean, I'm sorry, the Boba Fett Starship. But <clears throat> there's the side. Back is uh, pretty much the same as the front. Here's the other side. And there's the top. You do get the seismic charge bombs and the slave one does fire um, the missiles. Underneath, you got that. Let me just move this out of the way. Looks cool. Time to open it up. Alright, so as soon as we open the box, <clears throat> this is the inside. And That's probably Boba Fett. I believe Boba Fett doesn't look hard in this one. Here's the stand. It's the same, exact same one that uh, comes with the first release. Or the, now I guess it's a reissue release, but... This part just attaches on here. Quite a bit of stuff in this one. It does come with the two seismic charge bombs. These go in the back, right here, one right here, and then one right on the other side. Just like that, and if you were to want to, you know, shoot them out. There are buttons right here, one right here for this to release, and then another one on this side, so. Well. Next you're gonna see these two, uh, these two things right here, these are actually the weapons on, that go on the bottom of the slave one down here. These do fire the missiles. Um, you have the button in the back to shoot them. I'm not gonna do that, I don't wanna lose these. But they'll attach on the bottom, like so. Just like that. And then we have these things, which are the wings. These will go on the side.
there are two holds right here. This big one goes in here, and then the small one, I don't know if you can see it right here. Not this, but that part will go right in there. In this bag you have uh, what I believe is the escape pod. And uh, that also comes with the instruction manual on how to put everything together. comes with some sticker decals right there just for the interior of the Slave 1 chip and it also tells you right here where to put all that kind of stuff so all right so if you lay the Slave 1 down you'll be able to open this hatch part and uh, there should be a door right here there it is Keep the escape pod in there. You also have this that comes out like that. And then just remember that uh, the escape pod has a latch right up there. You just pull down on that and it'll fall right out like so. Put your figurines in here. But I'm gonna close that up. Alright, so I got all the little stickers in there. Um, I'm gonna be honest, my decal placement isn't the best. Like, that's just bad, but I don't care. I already got this this starship uh, this is just an extra I'm not sure what I'll do with this one probably just keep it as is you can see the weathering though it's really nice a lot better than the original release the original just looked completely clean um, not so much not so much paint chip for uh, for the body and I'll, I'll bring the original, even though I kind of modified the original to attempt to look like this one. Uh, I'll explain that in a bit, but yeah. Things go like that. Here's a brand new one, and this is the old one. Now I know what you're thinking, that doesn't look like the old one, and that's because I modified it to look like the one in the book of Boba Fett, um, just because I got bored one day and decided to weather it a bit. Um, put some paint apps so it looks worn and beat up. weathering what I was going for carbon scoring some scratches on the rims rim side here and just so you could tell that uh, it's been used like these wings have been rotating a lot of carbon scoring this part, like the, the guns, the, the lower part of the Slave 1 just looks a lot better in my opinion with the weathering I did, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's the old one.
the first release. This one didn't come with any figurine or anything like that. We didn't get Boba Fett with this one. It was just literally the Slave One. The This one though, this one did come with a carbonized Han Solo, which is right here in this compartment. That's something that the new release doesn't come with. This one just comes with uh, the uh, Nomad Boba Fett. And actually, I wonder if that compartment is on here. Yeah. So you can put a carbonized bounty back there as well if you really want to. Old? New. I just doused this one with a wash and added some silver accents and stuff like that. The carbon scoring, just so it kind of looks like it was in a star fight or something, you know what I mean? And this one's a clean one. So this one is this one, but this one is technically the earlier version of this one. So they're the same? I don't know. They are the same. Same damn thing. Um, but now that we got that out of the way, take a look at these wings. That I tried so hard and put so much time into just to get it all dirty and scuffed up. And then the Hasbro version. Nice and clean. Well, kind of. If there wasn't the paint chipping, it'd be like brand new, right? Straight out of the Kuat drive yards. But not this one. Same stand. Same body. Same mold, you know? It's the same thing. You could fit two figures in the back. Like Fennec, Mando, and then Boba Fett. Same with this one. Uh, when you lay it down, this does rotate, if you didn't already know that, you should know that. If you, uh, if you got the previously released, or if you've been into the vintage collection for a while now. But yeah, am I happy with mine? Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one, probably just, I don't know. Maybe, you know, I, you know what? I know what I'm gonna do with that one. So in Attack of the Clones, the Slave 1 looks a little different, so I think I'm going to make the Slave 1 from the Attack of the Clones when Jango is still alive and we see it on Kamino. That's a good idea. I'm going to do that. So we'll have the, origin the Boba Fett's Slave 1 and then, you know, it's the same ship, but, you know, different paint. Boba decided to go with uh, the colors on his armor. So we'll have Boba Fett Slave 1 and then we'll have uh, Jango Slave 1. So, you know, never mind. I'm happy that I got this one, even though it costs 200 goddamn dollars. But look forward to that video. That's going to be a cool video. I'm going to do a custom on that now. Uh, but on to the Boba Fett. All right, so Boba Fett doesn't come carded unfortunately he comes in this little bag this is what I'm more excited for the nomad Boba Fett from the book of Boba Fett before he gets his armor back so what's wrong with this arm oh there we go 
All right, so first impressions, this looks really good. Obviously the soft goods are soft goods. <laughs> They're as good as soft goods can be, especially in the six inch or three and three quarter inch scale. The Nomad Boba Fett from the six inch line was amazing. So I expect no different no difference from this one this already looks amazing so when I was opening opening this up I noticed that Boba doesn't have his blaster the other uh, small blaster that he has throughout uh, the book of Boba Fett series if you can remember he has like a little sidearm pistol thing and he doesn't come with that I looked into in the bag and I didn't see one under there so I don't know either mine didn't come with it or I doubt that it must have fallen out or something and I just didn't know but I, I'm pretty sure mine didn't come with that so it looks cool I'm gonna take the uh, soft goods off just to kind of see what we got underneath this robe all right, so this is what he looks like. Let's check out the articulation. There's a foot. Uh, rocker ankles. That's good. Knee. Swivel. And he can do the splits. That's on a... The ball hips. More soft goods right here. So it's not. It's good that these are soft goods because if they were like hard, I could see them getting in the way of the articulation of Boba Fett. But. Waist. Right hand and left hand. Some arm action. So there's no bond swivel in the at the torso, but that's all right because the articulation isn't bad. Like look at how far back he could he could go, and how far forward. So this guy can do some crunches. A lot of people like the the Luke the Luke figure some people didn't like how it was just you know a swivel at the torso uh, which I could see I mean for a new updated figure it's surprising that they didn't include that but with Boba Fett they did a good job with that Head. You can look down and up. Here's the gaffy stick. This gaffy stick looks a lot better than the previous ones that we've gotten with the Tuscan Raiders. I'm not a fan of the Gaffy sticks that we got with those figures. They were just kind of small and look too, I don't know, they just look weird, but that looks really good. It's basically all gold with uh, the brown. Got the Tuscan Raider cycler rifle that it comes with. Also comes with the leather strap, good paint apps, has gold paint apps right there, and then the scope is uh, a grayish, dark gray. Looks good. 
So really good articulation on this figure. I'm impressed. Is it worth $200 though? Uh, I'm leaning more towards no. <laughs> because even though this is a great figure, um, it only cost that amount because you know it's locked behind a $200 slave one that that's basically a repaint hardly even a repaint but yeah it sucks that uh, this this figure is locked behind that $200 price point um, I know some people are gonna wait until I don't know, maybe the price drops a little bit. I I can understand that. I can understand if people don't want to pick this up. Just because it is really expensive. I believe the original release was somewhere around $150, if I remember correctly. That released a while ago from now. And even then I got mine for pretty good price it was on sale when I got my first reissue of the slave one so not too many complaints there but if you don't want to pick this up because of the price point because of the price I completely understand is it worth two hundred dollars for a slave one and a nomad fat if you didn't pick up the first issue of the slave one then i would say yeah this is a little more inclined towards you but but because i already have it and i know a lot of other people already have it too a lot of people are choosing not to pick this one up anyways let's do some posing with him all right so there's boba fett with everything on his back cycler rifle and gaffy stick on his back just kind of standing there, looking ominous and mean. Like I said before, the Black Series release was is still by far one of my more favorite releases that uh, they did for uh, in, in the Black Series, and this holds up. This holds up with uh, the Black Series one. The soft goods are are great. The accessories that it comes with. The only thing is, is that, like I said, I don't know. I don't know about that pistol. We don't get one, but you could just grab any of the other ones, like uh, the pistol that comes with the Morak Boba Fett, or the other release from the Book of Boba Fett, the deluxe one, and you could just put that in the holster. However. Yeah, I mean, with a $200 price point, it should come with it. <laughs> it really should come with it. Here's another nicely posed Boba Fett using the Cycler rifle. And now I have him using the Gaffy stick. likeness is definitely there good job on that Hasbro so here he is with the gaffy stick and the pistol I just grabbed the pistol from the uh, book of Boba Fett version and uh, put it put it in his arm in his hand So here I have all the Fets. I have the ROTJ Boba Fett. That's a good figure. The brand new Nomad Boba Fett. The Morak Boba Fett over here. And then that one's the Deluxe Book of Boba Fett. Boba Fett. 
And there goes Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. I don't know why this guy doesn't want to stand, but... I've been trying for a while to get him to stand and stay standing. He won't stay standing, but... Compare the head sculpts with these guys. And check out just how accurate they are. You might be thinking they are, they're just the same head sculpts, but I don't know, man. This one looks just the best out of all of them. I don't know, then again, it, may, it might just be me. They're probably just all three of the same head sculpts and I'm probably just trying to justify that $200 price point, but I don't know. It looks good. It looks really good. Is this one my favorite out of all of them? No. Uh, I'd have to say my favorite is definitely the original. Nothing beats this one, in my opinion, even though the hips aren't the ball joint hips, unfortunately. If that were true, then this would definitely be easily the best out of all of them, but this is definitely the best look of Boba Fett. Then, I would probably have to give it to the deluxe one. Just all the awesome stuff that came with it and the amazing articulation on this figure. It's just amazing. The paint apps were so good. The soft goods, amazing. Uh, everything, everything is just amazing about this one. It was definitely a deluxe figure, did it? it this one was still expensive though. Did it deserve that uh, high price point? I think it was like $28 or something, so over $30 with shipping and handling and all that kind of stuff, but I don't know. Um, it's still a great figure. I like it. And then in third place is definitely this one. Good articulation. Good head sculpt. Uh, the accessories are amazing. The cons about it, though, it does have some cons. Uh, I'm telling you, man, mine didn't come with the uh, pistol. I don't know if that's a QC issue or what it is, but yeah, mine did not come with that. Or if it just doesn't, I don't know if it even includes the uh, pistol, which is why I'm bringing it up in the cons. But uh, what else? What else? Uh, it sucks that it doesn't come carded I think a lot of people would have liked if it would have came carded in the box and also it sucks that it it stuck behind a $200 price point along with another slave one that you have to buy so I could see why this one is hard to come by not a lot of people want it because you know $200 for this figure, man. That's a lot of money. Great figure. Is it worth the $200 though? No. Definitely not. Uh, I would definitely wait until, you know, it might get uh, a little cheaper. They might uh, put down the price a little lower, put it on sale. Then at that point, definitely pick it up. Because this figure is amazing. And then in last place, unfortunately, has to go to Morak Boba Fett. Now, don't get me wrong, I still love this figure. I'm not, I'm not knocking on it. The soft goods are amazing, articulation, uh, really good. It's basically the deluxe, just without the flame effects and all that kind of stuff, different paint apps, and yeah. Lower body is different as well. It's a great figure. They're all great, is what I'm saying. But this one's definitely the weakest of all of the Boba Fett releases.
Anyways, what do you guys think? Will you be picking it up? Will you be waiting? Are you excited for this Boba Fett release? Are you not? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm glad I have it, but it's definitely not worth the uh, $200. Like I said, I'm gonna probably do a custom Django Fett era Slave 1 when I have the time uh, with the other Slave 1 that I got with this guy. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably end up recording that at some point. Probably not anytime soon. I'm super busy with other stuff, but yeah. That's it. That's it for this video. Peace.